It's 8.30 p.m. Thousands of people in the town of Rolling Fork, Mississippi are completely unaware of what's coming straight for them. Meteorologists were buzzing with anticipation on Tuesday as they spotted a high chance for severe weather developing in the southern United States. While not entirely unusual, the predictions caught the attention of weather enthusiasts and professionals alike. So what was the culprit? Well, a trough was situated in the upper levels of the atmosphere. A trough is basically a long line of low pressure, and it's known for its potential to spawn violent storms and tornadoes. The trough was set to sweep across the country, and by Wednesday, it became clear that something was brewing down south. The Storm Prediction Center, or the SPC, issued an enhanced risk warning, a level three out of five, around the Louisiana and Mississippi border. A rare move by the SPC to release such a warning so early. Though it hinted at a storm, the actual danger remained uncertain. Unfortunately, the people in the region would soon learn just how severe the storm was going to be. As the situation developed, the SPC ramped up the warning to a rare moderate risk and an even rare 15% hatched risk for tornadoes. And to clarify, this didn't mean a 15% chance of tornadoes happening, but rather a 15% chance of a dangerous EF2 plus tornado occurring within 25 miles of any point. With the increasing likelihood of some sort of tornado outbreak, thousands of people began to prepare. Meteorologist Reed Temmer tweeted, concerning forecaster Friday, with the tornado outbreak possible with potential for strong to violent tornadoes. This one has a potential for big problems. Despite the ominous warnings, many residents in the southern states were not paying much attention. Severe storms at this hour and a real concern tonight over these long track tornadoes possible in several states after dark. And then throughout the overnight, we're looking to get into central parts of Tennessee and maybe even Kentucky, so be aware of that. The town of Rolling Fork begins another day with many people off to work. Businesses such as the local animal shelter are open and active, with a lost dog being found by the owners a few days prior Everything's running as a typical morning would on the ground, but up above the clouds, something menacing is brewing. The air was very unstable. A tool meteorologists use called water vapor imagery indicated the trough was getting stronger and moving quicker, while warm, moist air from the Gulf was positioned almost perfectly to crash right into it. By around 5 p.m. local time, thunderstorms were quickly maturing in Louisiana. The unique aspect of these storms is that although they are currently quite chaotic, they are all spaced out and they're full of energy, creating perfect, powerful environments for something bad to occur. All they needed to do was maintain momentum to the east, where they could hit favorable conditions to start spinning. When storms start spinning, you consider that a supercell, and what makes it super is rotation. When a storm rotates, extreme weather anomalies occur, like hail, bursts of wind and floods, very powerful lightning, and of course, tornadoes. A tornado watch was issued at 5.15 p.m., covering an enormous stretch of land between Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Judging by how disorganized the setup was, people were slowly getting antsy about if anything was actually going to happen. The storm still needed to move into an ideal spot of low pressure, but it was impossible to tell if they actually would. Additionally, moisture and heat energy that supercells strive on was diminishing as the sun set. That was until one particular supercell became notable. Two for this particular cell. Again, very close to Highway 1 here. The intriguing supercell soon became menacing as it visibly expanded and was rapidly spinning while producing large size hail and rain. Based on radar data, the National Weather Service decided to issue a tornado warning. This large tornado warning stretched multiple counties across Mississippi but that supercell hadn't actually spawned a tornado yet. Even still, the radar showed a rotation signature or a tight point where two contrasting wind directions meet. This essentially shows extremely fast rotational motion. At this point, it was literally a matter of minutes before the supercell would produce something. At 7.57 p.m., a debris signature occurs on the top of the velocity signature. This blue dot here is part of a measure called the correlation coefficient. It essentially shows things that aren't supposed to be in the clouds. And since the color is very different, it's currently signifying things like trees, dirt, and even chunks of people's homes. This was unmistakably the start of a tornado. The very weak tornado started in the middle of farms, tearing up nothing more than a couple of crops. Soon, it crossed its first major road, Egremont Street. As if driven by some sort of supernatural force, the messy, weak vortex gained intensity with an alarming speed, first turning into a barrel shape before morphing into a tornado 
wider than it is tall. Storm chasers were now here capturing images of the tornado and cross referencing this footage along with damage analysis. We can predict the tornado's inner funnel was over a quarter mile wide at this point, with its damaging wind field stretching over half a mile. Experts consider this a wedge tornado. The combination of both storm chaser sightings and destruction evident from radar imagery prompted the National Weather Service to issue a very rare tornado emergency around a small town northeast of the storm. This town was Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Right now, the tornado was almost completely invisible to the naked eye, as heavy rain mixed with a pitch black sky obstructed it from any view. By 8.05, the tornado crossed its first residential area, a stretch of three homes along Ending Bar Road. An electrical transformer explodes, producing a large blue light also known as a power flash. This was the first time the tornado was both in an inhabited area and also causing damage so violent it was literally ripping metal apart. This home on Ending Bar closest to the core of the tornado has its roof completely torn off, but the tornado is still intensifying. The projected path of the tornado had it technically skewing northeast, where it would only brush the edge of residential areas and not even make a direct hit through the town. However, just after crossing Ending Bar road, the tornado deviated more to the east, setting up for a perfect impact on the Indian Bayou subdivision. The tornado was only strengthening from this point forward. It crossed into the road of the subdivision at almost a perfect bullseye, wiping every single home on the street off of its foundation. Trees in this area became so damaged that the literal bark was ripped off. Images afterward showed that signs had their paint stripped off. And unfortunately, the first several indicators of a catastrophic tornado were seen here, with damage to the trees and home in the subdivision being rated EF4, the second highest rating for a tornado. Multiple people were trapped under rubble, and at least two people died on this street alone. The tornado was just getting started, however. From these homes, two structures across the highway were impacted and completely destroyed. The the tornado was moving so quickly at this point that debris it picked up from the structures was being slammed into homes not even in the direct path. This debris would completely destroy the roofs and walls of these homes. The edge of the town itself was getting closer and closer and unfortunately the carnage seemed to only continue as the first street here of the town was impacted. Every one of the over 27 homes sustained intense damage. At one point, the Vortex lofted up a semi-truck here before slamming the vehicle into the home of the Pierce family. The truck instantly killed both Lonnie and Melissa Pierce, beloved members of the community. At the same time, Storm Chasers spotted something interesting orbiting the Vortex. At the base of the rotation, a bright pair of lights were seen spinning. At first, the lights do a full circle around the vortex before showing up again much higher in the air. It was clear that a car was actually running, invisibly being thrown by the tornado. People speculated that it could have been something else, but nonetheless, something large and bright was seen orbiting the tornado as it entered the town's edge. Even though the town had barely been hit yet, hundreds of homes had already been decimated before the tornado had even finished in Intensifying. The tornado's path deviated north slightly before crossing onto Colette Avenue. Here, multiple brick structures were torn to rubble, and the core of the tornado began to suck the grass out of the dirt. Hundreds of storm chasers captured images and video of the tornado at this point, and the absolute mammoth of a size that it was. But something they also noticed was the speed. The tornado was moving at a speed of over 50 miles per hour, with wind speeds of up to 190 miles per hour. For context, an EF5 tornado, the highest on the scale, has speeds of 200 miles per hour, which means this tornado was only 10 miles per hour away from being the strongest tornado possible. Two metal industrial buildings on the edge of the tornado's path looked more like a nuclear explosion site than a tornado, and of course it hadn't even made it past the center of the city yet. 12 people died before the tornado crossed Deer Creek into the heart of Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Here, it would cause its most catastrophic damage yet. The town's water tower is torn out of the ground and bent in half like a chopstick. The concrete the tower was bolted to is crumpled and bent. Multiple large semi-trucks and 18-wheelers are picked up, twisted and mangled, and then slammed into homes and buildings at highway speeds. 200 feet away from the water tower is the home of Damien Harris. Damien was aware of the weather, 
but was out of town for work while his parents stayed at his home. A couple hours prior, Damien's mom called him, telling him to stay at work as the weather was getting significantly worse. Because of this call, he stayed, but by the time the tornado was over his home, he began increasingly concerned over his mother because of her lack of response. This lack of contact prompted him to rush back to Rolling Fork, but unfortunately, debris from the water tower, paired with the extremely strong winds, completely destroyed his home before he could get there. His father's back was severely broken, and his mother tragically passed away before he could get to her. While this was just one instance, the tornado was basically covering the entire town, and the same tragic story was being repeated for almost every single home there. Around the block, the town's animal shelter, with dozens of animals inside, collapsed to a pile of rubble. The damage here was marked as total destruction of an entire building. Two buildings next to the shelter are also wiped away, with nothing remaining, ironically including the town's funeral home. From here, hundreds of homes continue to be severely damaged, destroyed, and horrifically killing multiple people. A section of the town, populated by many businesses, is the next victim. Multiple well-built businesses are ripped to shreds, including Chuck's Dairy Bar, multiple industrial and construction buildings, and actually most compelling of all being a family dollar, which marks the point of the tornado's worst destruction. The family dollar was so violently ripped away, nothing remained of the building except for the ground in which it stood on. A similar effect happened to the dairy bar, however, it was not nearly as well constructed of a building and had a much worse rating. A storm chaser here was injured as well, and his car was completely totaled after he miscalculated the trajectory and ended up in the direct path. By 8.06 p.m., the last victims of Rolling Fork were now being impacted by the tornado. Devastatingly, a large mobile home park with dozens of residents was hit straight on at peak speed, turning the once nice neighborhood into a junkyard. Dozens of people were killed in their homes right here. The tornado finally exited Rolling Fork at 8.10 p.m. Calculations provided that all of this destruction and every fatality in the completely destroyed city was done in three minutes. That's right, all of the fatalities, all of the destruction, three minutes. For 20 minutes after Rolling Fork, the tornado went through completely royal terrain. It looked to be the end of the horror as radar imagery showcased a much weaker tornado than before. Well, at least that's what the residents of Silver City were hoping for. Silver City was a small community northeast of Rolling Fork and it was now in the direct path. A tornado emergency was placed, and Silver City, while much smaller than Rolling Fork, was primarily inhabited by very poor civilians, most of whom lived in mobile homes, one of the worst possible structures to be in during a tornado. As the twister approached, the intensity of rotation on the velocity scans looked ludicrous. The tornado wiped through the town and obliterated almost every home in the community. Luckily after that, it weakened immensely, and the worst damage it produced after Silver City was the shattering of windows and some occasional roof damage along the home situated by highways before it disappeared into the trees. 22 fatalities were estimated by 11.10 p.m., and immediately after the tornado subsided, search and rescue efforts began. Multiple storm chasers flooded in as essentially first responders. One man was trapped under the rubble of his home for 30 minutes before a group of rescuers heard his screams and dug him out. As many realized both hospitals were destroyed in Rolling Fork, the University of Mississippi's medical center partnered with police to establish a temporary field hospital at the town's National Guard. All that was left to do was wait until sunrise. For most, March 24th was just another Friday, but for the citizens of Rolling Fork, it will be remembered as the day thousands of lives were demolished, ruined, and devastated as a tornado destroyed an entire town. As of today, Rolling Fork has been visited by the president as well as hundreds of volunteers and donors. And while the town will rebuild, it probably will never be the same. But residents of Rolling Fork are choosing to look at the bright side. Satellite imagery shows that the day after the tornado, hundreds of cars built up across the streets to help out. If you want to donate to Rolling Fork, Mississippi, there'll be a link below providing all the necessary details. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. More documentaries will come soon.